Ron DeSantis was a famous governor during COVID and a really famous presidential candidate for a few seconds. Um, but these types of comments, like he's at the Wailing Wall, just like the guy from Argentina. Like a lot of our leaders go to the Wailing Wall for some reason. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, they they leave their post-it notes on the wall and such. So DeSantis also was one of the uh, the first governors to implement the anti-Semitism type. You can't criticize the state of Israel and that you can't criticize Zionism and it equates to uh, hatred toward individuals of a certain race, uh, uh, religious background, right? It's not the same thing. We're criticizing politics, not religion. So anyway, that's the guy who's going to tell you this. I want you to count. This would almost be like a drinking game. Each unfactual statement that he makes. And again, if what Hamas is doing is so bad and the evidence is so glaring, why do you guys keep making up stuff that doesn't exist, making claims that can easily be disproven? Like uh, nobody, like it's not that hard to go to Odyssey and search Golda Meir Palestine. I know it's not on YouTube because you guys scrub that. Guess what? Free enterprise puts it out there. It's just a few clicks away and you can learn all day. So let's go to Ron DeSantis and see what he has to say. Here's uh, with that type of, of, of views. Doral, where it uh, calls for a cease of hostilities in occupied territories. The bill was penned by a pro-Palestinian activist that Mayor Fraga asked to, uh, to write the, the resolution. What's your take on that? What kind of message does it send to the rest of the state, uh, considering it's the first city of its kind to pass it to resolve I think it's a total fraud. And the fact that they're doing that here in South Florida is a joke. The people of Florida as a whole, but certainly the people of South Florida, they stand with the state of Israel. Israel was the one that was attacked. Now, we, we went to the University of Florida in Gainesville last week, uh, and we did a press conference where they tried to set up an encampment. That attempt lasted about five minutes, and then they were, they were escorted off. Um, but, you know, we're there, and it's interesting because we don't let the inmates run the asylum. We don't let you uh, disrupt university operations. We don't let you take over property, but yet, uh, and so none of that is First Amendment activity. And so will some people say, oh, well, well you're cracking down on people's rights. Versus, says, no, you can protest, but you can't act in ways that violate basic code of conduct. And in fact, during our press conference, we're there doing a press conference. It's me. I've got the board of trustees from the university, the president of the university. I've got other people. And I've got all these guys out there screaming uh, from the river to the sea. So obviously, they have a right to do that. I mean, I think the more they open their mouth, I think they look like a horse's patoot with what they're saying. But that's fine. That's fine. You know, my view is very simple, like with some of these people. You know, better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. And when they're saying this stuff, when they're saying things like from the river to the sea, you know, that's just not some cheeky chant. They're basically saying they want to see the destruction of the state of Israel and a second Holocaust. That's what Hamas wants. That's why Hamas baked babies in ovens. That's why they were raping the mothers. That's why they were beheading right. elderly people. You got to stop it. 7th. Stop it. It's happening too fast. Ooh, it's all coming at me at once. I mean, for a second there, I doubted myself. I'm like, did he really say a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't true? Let's, I, you know, I was having trouble because like it was the first part that I didn't register. It's when he started saying that stuff. I was like, ding, 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 ding. This is, this is untoward. This is unbecoming of a governor to repeat so many lies because I have to understand that you do have better information and you chose not to use it. So many lies in a row for the purpose of slaughtering indigenous Semites of the area. So, LD, if you'd rewind it, just 15 seconds. Let's take these accusations and allegations one by one, and let's also consider what Golda Meir just informed us as he tries to lay this out. The C, you know, that's just not some cheeky chant. They're basically saying they want to see the destruction of the state of Israel and a Pause. second Holocaust. That's a second Holocaust would be what the Likud party declared in 1977, which is from the river to the sea, only shall be Israeli sovereignty 
as the second Holocaust in this case would be against the Palestinian people, the indigenous people who did not move there, according to a plan of a bunch of atheists from Austria and Poland. Let's not forget. All right. So now uh, we covered that one. Let's let it place. Go ahead. That's what Hamas wants. That's why Hamas baked babies in ovens. That's Pause. why they were raping the mother. Pause. I call bullshit. There's no evidence that Hamas baked any babies in ovens. There is evidence that Israel used hellfire missiles on their own fucking citizens. There is evidence that they used tank shells on their own citizens. There's evidence that they used the helicopter squads on their own citizens. There's evidence that they stood down for seven hours, sir. So don't expect me to be gaslit by that type of bullshit, babies in ovens. What are you trying to conjure up in people's mind? Babies in ovens. Oh, that's like the Nazis did, right? The Nazis did it with those bread ovens that they had. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and let him keep playing because he's digging. I'm digging his speech. Once. That's why Hamas baked babies in ovens. That's why they were raping the mothers. That's why they were beheading elderly people. All right, pause October it. Let's 7th. take those two. So they were raping the mothers and beheading, beheading elderly people. Now, there is footage of some guy going after another guy with a hoe trying to take his head off. Not a very effective way. Not a weapon of war. The hoe, a garden tool. But, you know, I guess it's uh, use of whatever props are around at that time. If that's authentic footage shown to us by the IDF in the first place, because I know that he's seen the IDF propaganda film, the very selective edit that leaves out a whole bunch of other incon inconvenient pieces. Right. It's 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 not the best piece to uh, to start making these accusations on. So uh, if there's evidence that Hamas baked babies in ovens, I would like the reference. If there's a reference that Hamas was raping women in a weaponized sexual way that doesn't go to the already debunked stories that came from Zaka and the New York Times and an IDF undercover person working in the New York Times under Jeffrey Gettleman, like that whole thing blew up in their faces. So if there's new evidence that you have to back up those accusations, I'd be happy to review it. And to see if it has uh, if it has merit and it has an audit trail of authenticity. However, I don't think the lawyer from Yale has to th like he doesn't require any evidence for these claims. He couldn't have. He's just like Biden saying, I never thought I'd see beheaded babies and pictures of blah, 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 blah. That's because he didn't actually see it. And BB said, hey, say these words to my fellow Americans. Right. Uh, being from Philadelphia and all, we're going to get to that video. When you learn that every almost every Israeli prime minister has a false name, it's going to be like the the cherry on top. But first, we got to get through DeSantis here. He probably has a couple other unfactual things to gaslight his audience and to kiss to kiss up to uh, whoever's owning the wall over there that he kisses. They were raping the mothers. That's why they were beheading elderly people on October seventh. You know, it's interesting. I didn't see. Uh, those folks protesting Hamas's actions. They were very quiet about Hamas's actions. Now they're just doing and they're protesting this. But I'd also say people should learn their history. The fact of the matter is Ironic, there's never right? been a country or state called Palestine. Jews oh, have... Okay, I'd pause it for a second. Whoa. Right? I mean, <laughs> who doesn't know history? Yale law dude, governor of Florida. I mean, Scott, does it make you think that maybe we should aim higher and start running for office or what, bro? I mean, I'm this down. I mean, I'm, if this is what it's, if this is what it's going to take, like, I mean, God, that's insane. Holy I mean, if crap. they let those guys, like, he he runs a big state. Yeah, and he clearly's talking out his ass, but he makes it sound like it's coming from his mouth. He's a great ventriloquist. Well, that's a that's a common thing to do is to be really good on COVID lockdowns, all that stuff, and then just suck at everything else, particularly around like the Israel issue, guns, like everything, man. Like there's just, there seems to be a trend out there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, and if I'm wrong, you're going to use evidence on your side, right, Governor? You're not going to have some Florida State troopers like drag me out one night and like uh, Rodney King me because I'm not <laughs> down with that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Be a man is what I'm saying, Ron regardless of whether or not you know you've got lifts okay i'll squat in a picture you can put your armor on my shoulder we'll act like we're the same height and the same intellect I'll, I'll even go there with you all right so now we have much more juicier news to get into 
then Ronnie, is there more to that video? I guess we should make, let's make sure he's done lying. Yeah. I was, although, although it is his video. job. I yeah. was going to, I was trying to find real quick. I haven't been able to find it. I think we talked about it on the show before, but there was a funny clip that Owen Benjamin did a while back that kind of puts the real ice um, on the cake of this whole thing where he's uh, going through his Encyclopedia Britannica, right? I think we did. 1968. Yeah, 1968. And it's like, there's a big old entry for Palestine. And then he, and then he goes to the H. He's like, oh, wait a minute. There's no. It goes hologram, hollow. And it was like, oh wow, there just happens to be no entry for the the burnt offering, right? For example, and so, but but there's this big thing about Palestine. It's pure hate, pure hate, nothing but pure yeah. hate and anti-Semitism. Encyclopedia yeah. was wrong. Those yeah, maps exactly. of Palestine are wrong. Yep. The passports from Palestine are wrong. DeSantis is right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, unfortunately, you know, people of Florida they believe they you know they believe what their governor says, so they believe. Hamas burnt babies in ovens. And it's like, if they're that bad, why don't they really do that stuff then? Yeah. So I'm not saying they're not bad. I'm not saying they're not terrorists because if they want Palestine to be a second state outside of Israel, they're going to have to use terrorism because that's how Israel became a state. Israel taught and set the, set the tone, which that guy Mossad denies. Now I could sit here and I do have open at my back and call. I have Thomas Suarez's state of terror how terrorism created modern israel and i can you know search the word rape in here and i can read you the histories of 1948 nakba and what the haganah irgun and stern gang did to those people and then we can get into diary scene which was a real tragedy or you can deny like all these things exist and be an ignorant chump who runs a, a florida <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go ahead let's hear him out just in case i'm wrong in a country or state called Palestine. Jews have the, the longest connection to that territory. It goes back to biblical times. Thousands Hold on a second. Uh -huh. He might have a point. He might point because the, the Bible does go back a long time, right? And it is their book. And uh, Abraham, Moses, Moses was Egyptian. And then they went to Babylon for a while. So where are they from again? I know they have a long history, and people who follow the Torah are the people of Israel. It wasn't a nation state, bro. They were all over the place, the followers of the scroll. So again, he's not telling his audience the truth, either because he doesn't know or because he's lying. Either way, maybe he shouldn't be your governor, Florida. Again, just asking for a friend because I do love Florida. I got lots of friends down there, so I'm taking a chance by telling you the truth about this band. <laughs> All right, let's let, let him play. He's doing Thousands it. Thousands of years. They were displaced by hostile forces over the years. But just in the immediate history be, until World War I, that was hundreds of years of rule by the Ottoman Empire, by, by Turks. That was not a Palestinian state. And then the Turks Brits took over Jews. after World War I. They had the mandate for Palestine. And the vision was to have a Jewish state and an Arab state. And in the UN, after World War II, adopted Jewish state, Arab state. Jews accepted it, founded modern Israel. The Arabs rejected it and went to war against Israel, a war that they Pause lost. Because that's also kind of disingenuous. The Zionists accepted the offer of half of the land, or actually, I mean, it started out, if we go to the UN 1947, 48 uh, era, they were giving the Zionists part of the land and they were giving the Palestinians part of the land. Well, of course the Zionists took it because they just got half of other people's property. And of course the Arabs were like, mm, no, thank you. We just lost half our property to these people from Europe who want to move here. And they're not just moving here and buying property. They're taking it with the help of the British empire. So he's being disingenuous to the fact again, because he either doesn't know or because he seeks to gaslight his audience. Either way, I don't think he's qualified to talk on this topic. Maybe he should read some history. Go ahead, let it play. The Arabs rejected it and went to war against Israel, a war that they lost. They also lost a war to, uh, to annihilate Israel in 67, 73, and they've had all these intifadas ever since then. So how is it somehow that you're occupying uh, when you have the best connection to the land, you had, you accepted a partition plan uh, and then had to win defensive wars just to be able to keep your people alive. So I think a lot of this is not rooted in facts. It's not Pause. rooted in... 
It's not <laughs> rooted in facts. It's not rooted in reality. You know, we're, uh, you had to wage a war to keep your people alive. Was that in Europe? Because these are Europeans. Oh, you had to wage a war to make it safe for Europeans to steal Palestinian land. That's what DeSantis is saying right there. Now, again, either doesn't know or he's trying to gaslight you. Either way, he's full of shit right there. And he keeps referring back. Maybe you should learn some history. I don't think he understands that. I don't think he does that for himself. He obviously doesn't need to. He gets talking points from people who send checks and they're saying, here's what to say, Ron. So I'm not a governor, but I get to say what I want, when I want, where I want. And that's freedom of speech. And I'm going to continue exercising it, especially because you're starting to tell us all oh, there's things we can't say, things we can't notice, things we can't talk about. And I think when you're doing that to protect victims, that might be OK. But this time you're doing it to protect aggressors. The aggressors are on the record. The world sees. And there's a track record being laid down by the people protecting the people doing ethnic cleansing, genocide and apartheid. Let the gentleman finish because... God short shrifted him on the height. Let him at least get his talk in. <laughs> people alive. So I think a lot of this is not rooted in facts. It's not rooted in history. And uh, look, I we took a big delegation over to Israel my first year as governor. Uh, I've had an ch opportunity to go many years, um, really over the last decade. I've been many times. And you know, we look about the U.S., I mean, we are a speck in history compared to that history there. You go back there, you've got thousands of years, many thousands of years of history. You can open up a Bible, you can walk in these areas and see what, they, what, what was written down. Uh, all the things that are so important that really form the foundation of Western civilization uh, is right there. And I can tell you this. Go ahead, go pause it for a second. The city of Jerusalem. We're not going to play the end of the clip. I'm good with what he has to say right there. But I would say that you're right. There is a long history and there is a book and there is a religion and there's a people associated with that area. There's also another religion and another book associated with that area and another religion and another book and the people associated with that area. And if you want to go back to the original people, the people of the scroll, I remember some stories, story time, Sunday school uh, version of that. It said, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. I think there was this thing called the Ten Commandments, Ron. And I think going over there after they pay you, uh, you get some trips to Israel. You get to see Ra Ra, maybe shoot some uh, fake Palestinians like Jerry Seinfeld's going to in the video we're playing coming up because, you know, just glamorize the terrorism. Why don't you? But um, here's the thing. How much time did you spend in Gaza? How much time did you spend in the West Bank? Did you ask why they kidnapped people from the West Bank? Did you uh, ask anything? No. You just listen to what they told you and you keep cashing the checks because that's what politicians have to be in this country. If you can't go out and fundraise from the people printing the money, then you're not going to win in any state, honey. All right, let's go on because I'm done. I'm done with that. I mean, I feel like I'm punching down, which is ironic because he's supposed to be above my pay grade, apparently. All right. What makes the Grand Theft World podcast unique, invigorating, exciting, and informative? Most other podcasts out there are either doing straight up interviews or they're just covering the daily news. They're covering current events from the day they happened. And that is effective, it's useful, it's a great starting point. And then sometimes these current events change during the week past the first story. So we like to give it a little time. You have to wait till some of the dust settles on these stories in order to give them accurate coverage. And the other thing that's really missing in the media landscape is covering the articles that are coming out every day. That's great. That's necessary. But who's bringing in contextual history so that you can understand what has been going on for decades and decades to lead up to the machinations and actions that we see unfolding today. So what we do here on the podcast is we cover current events. Many of these things are censored, but we wait about a week. As a forensic historian, I focused mainly through my career on the history of globalism and collectivism and things that they call maybe the new world order. There's a lot of facts to these sort of circumstances, groups, events, activities, working groups that they've had over time. So for Grand Theft World listeners, we not only break down the current events, most of which that are censored during the week, we provide you with contextual history, we give you the source notes, the references, we do deep dives, 
And this really empowers you with an understanding of context and history so that you can make more informed decisions in your life. There's also a community, a membership where you guys can actually ask questions and we can get into the show and share evidence. And there's a town hall weekly for Grand Theft World for those who listen to it and are interested in covering the stories that we don't get to during a six hour show. Listening to it an hour a day, you could uh, easily consume the week's news, but you're gonna have substance and meaning and context and understanding. And with that, you can make higher quality decisions in your life. So if you're interested in more quality in your life, go to grandtheftworld.com, click podcast at the top, and we'll see you there. Thank you. These allegations are false. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, folks. This isn't a video game. What are the most surprising things that you discovered once you started pulling on that thread, who he was connected to, what institutions he was influential over, what events he participated in? You don't have to think about it, dude. I got this quote because uh, you said you didn't know much about Klaus Schwab. I made it my job to, as soon as this happened, I'm like, okay, this guy's their front man. Let me learn about the official history of the World Economic Forum. I got their 40 year history. I got every book that Klaus Schwab has written or ghost written. I went through those books. This is one of the most interesting passages. Come on, man.